everybody, welcome back to Carbon's DIY Garage for video three of three for replacing the control arms on this 1997 Jeep TJ. You can go back and look at previous videos where I did the rear control arms, I did the lower control arms in the front, and then this video is the upper control arms. I did them in that order because uh, the rear are the easiest, the lower a little bit more challenging, and then these uppers are gonna prove to be the most challenging, I think. The reason for that, in the front, you have obviously a lot of grease and nastiness, but uh, this is the axle attachment, and there is a bushing in there somewhere, but that bushing is pressed into a housing on the axle itself, not a part of the control arm, and so you have to get that bushing out separately. And by the way this looks, it's gonna be a pretty nasty mess. And then in the rear, the bushing is part of the control arm, but um, again, it looks pretty bad and I'm really afraid of all the rust that's gonna be involved and trying to get these out. In theory, it is just two bolts per control arm and getting that bushing out and a new one pressed in, but uh, it's gonna be a bit of work, I feel. So I'm gonna take you on that journey. Let's go ahead and get started. And if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel. There's lots of good content behind us and more to come. Like the video if you find it helpful. Um, hit the notification bell to keep seeing when new videos show up. And if you're interested in helping me get some new car parts, Jeep parts, whatever, buymeacoffee.com is a great link to do that. And that's in the video description below. Also along with uh, the parts that I'm gonna be using, control arms, bolts, that sort of thing. One final note, I did buy new bolts. So um, if I have to destroy these bolts to get everything out, then that's okay because I'll replace them with hardware that I already have on hand. I'm going to start with the driver's side first, and this is the driver's side tire. And zooming in here on the back, this hole is uh, the bolt that we're going to be loosening. The other side of the bolt is more accessible, so that's where we're actually going to be doing the wrenching. But this is actually a flag nut that's on here. And in theory, if it's not completely rusted and just going to snap, this flag nut should make it pretty simple to get the bolt out. But what I'm going to do is just break the torque and make sure that that works. And then I'll go break torque on the front and we'll go from there. So this is a 15 millimeter socket. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys, for the last five days straight, every morning, I've been putting PB Blaster on all of these bolts and the bushings to try to help see if this can get loose. So if it does all come loose, I'm going to give at least half the credit to PB Blaster softening things up for me. All right, that broke free pretty easily, so win for PB Blaster on that one. Hey guys, so access in here sucks, but let me show you what I'm doing. So I've, the nut, actually came loose pretty easily, but it started to actually back the bolt out and the little tiny flag nut that's on the back side here didn't have enough grip to keep holding onto that control arm. I can't really point out to it, I just can't get my hand in there. But it just started spinning and then it's got the whole bolt spinning. I guess it's great, it means it's not um, rusted into the bushing, but I couldn't get the nut off. So I used a screwdriver, you can kind of see there it's putting pressure on that um, the flag nut there. And so now I can back off the nut the rest of the way and uh, see if I can do it one-handed. still pretty tight, but it's holding that flag nut in place anyway. So that's what I'm having to do to get the bolt, uh, the nut all the way off. All right, I spent about 45 minutes using the ball joint press in different ways, beating on it, trying to use the pickle fork or chisel to make it come out and um, no luck on any of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what I've seen other folks do on YouTube, use a drill and drill the rubber out uh, to try to get it to where it's just that shell that's left in there.
Well, here we are, about an hour and a half worth of work to get this bushing out. Um, two, two and a half hours so far on this whole thing. There's the old control arm, uh, the old bushing beat up, old bushing up the front, a little bit beat up. Um, <laughs> I used the bobble joint press to get the middle uh, sleeve out, uh, mostly just because I was so frustrated. I wanted to get something accomplished and then just beat the crap out of this thing to um, collapse it in the center on both sides. And then finally it started to release and now it's out. So now I'm just gonna go clean up the bore where the new bushing goes in and then start the process of putting everything together. Just by way of comparison, uh, the obviously the new control arm is at the top, the bad, the old one's at the bottom. Nice new bushing and uh, yeah, obviously this is the, the bushing that goes up front. It's got some extra holes in it, and actually uh, there was a zip tie on the old one holding the breather holes in place for the front differential, so I'll probably put that back together too. So I'm going to put a thin layer of grease um, in the bore there to help the new bushing slide in. The oversized end goes towards the tire and uh, you've got this lip here so it's not going to press in all the way to be flush. It's actually going to look like it's uh, sticking out but uh, you will have about a sixteenth of an inch of the sleeve uh, protruding on the uh, inboard side, so on the passenger side of the bracket. And what I've done is not only put grease on the bore, but I've also had these bushings uh, in the deep freeze all day. So hopefully it shrinks them down a little bit and it goes in pretty smoothly. And then I think I'll end up using the ball joint press to seed it fully. All right, so definitely loved using the ball joint press. It's a lot of parts and they're all heavy to get all set up. So that was a kind of a pain. It's been a long afternoon underneath the shoulders are starting to get all tired, but definitely worth it. You can see it's uh, pressed in. Um, the shoulder on the left hand side is all the way into the bore and just go until the ball joint press won't go any further. And you can see there's a little bit of the sleeve there that hangs out um, on the right hand side, the inboard side. So. Got it all pressed in place. Now to uh, put the new control arm in. And I'm gonna go ahead and reuse the um, back, the rear uh, bolt and flag nut since uh, they both came off pretty easily. I'll just chase the threads on those and reuse them because that flag nut is pretty nice. we got the uh, front and rear bolts and nuts in the rear bolt and nut obviously that was easy the front one uh, the bolt went all the way through except through the second side of the control arm without needing any help but we actually had to get the ratchet strap out here we are uh, to get it to all line up at the end but uh, it's in place now I'm gonna torque it down to 55 foot-pounds and call it a day and uh, work on the other side in the near future it's been about five hours today learning how to do this. Hopefully the passenger side is a little bit easier and goes a little bit faster because I've got this one behind me. We'll keep going. Here we are four weeks later, thanks to high school marching band season. And I'm finally gonna go after the passenger side front upper control arm. The uh, driver side has been working great for these last four weeks. So now let's just go do this one. The general idea and approach is gonna be the same. So unless I encounter something completely different, uh, we'll probably just fast forward through uh, most of this job so you can kind of see how it goes, but we won't spend a lot of time talking about it.
All right, I want to show you what I did here. Um, this is the obviously the front bolt, and um, getting it loose, breaking that torque, was just um, spinning this little keeper flag piece of junk, and it was uh, coming off. And so I used the same screwdriver technique that I used on the other side, but I actually had a long enough screwdriver it could uh, rest against the fan shroud and hold this keeper in place and it gave it enough pressure to where I could break the torque on the bolt and now the bolt's uh, spinning freely, or the nut I guess. So I should be able to get this out, but I want to show you that little trick, at least here on the passenger side, use a screwdriver to uh, hold that flag in place. Okay, that was not in any way fun, and it took a long time to figure out the best way to get this off. So let me just explain how it worked for me. Everybody has problems with this front bolt, um, and everybody seems to have different problems, but this is the little flag that is supposed to catch right here on the control arm and hold the bolt in place, and then you can just spin the nut off. Well, what happens is that this is really weak, and so it bends out, and so then you get the first problem where the bolt just spins freely, and so I was using the screwdriver to jam it in uh, place here so that I could work on the nut. But um, what happened then is that I got the nut loose enough to where the bolt would actually just pull out uh, this way and then the screwdriver wasn't very effective. So then I got a big pair of pliers and grabbed onto the, the flag here and held it with one hand. And uh, that worked for a little while. But then uh, what happened on this side, first looking at it, um, the threads on the bolt, uh, there's some blue here, so it was Loctited at one point, so that makes it a little bit more challenging. But then these threads are all rusted and they're all dirty and they're all messed up. So by the time I got the bolt, the nut backed out, um, it just stopped. And you can see kind of probably here, I was just uh, eating up the, the hex and that could make things worse. I really did not want to have to cut the bolt. I know I could but the space uh, up there for a grinder is pretty challenging, I think. So what I ended up doing uh, for a while is held this side with a ratcheting box wrench and then used my um, channel locks uh, to just use this side. And thankfully the weld held on this flag and I could loosen the bolt um, probably until it got about at here. Um, maybe a little bit further in. I took a die and so I, then I re-threaded the nut, took a die and ran it over the threads to try to clear it out. That worked a little bit, but not completely. So then I, I realized I've been working on this for a long time and I should have gone to the heat uh, a lot sooner. Um, and, and then as you saw, once I got the heat on there, it opened up and it was really easy to loosen up. So those are all the things I tried. The bottom line though is if you skip ahead to the heat, it might make things go a lot faster for you. So there's uh, my tips of how this came off for me. And I was also really lucky, the bolt was not at all rusted or seized into the bushing. So this all spun freely inside the bushing. So now we'll go try to get the bushing out. Press actually worked. I'm deaf now. As you guys saw, I did not have to drill the passenger side bushing out, so that's great, saves a lot of time. Thought I'd show you up close how I had the uh, ball joint press set up. As you saw, the screw side was up against the differential, and uh, I started with it uh, all the way out, it's backed out. Then there's uh, this piece that, uh, I don't know what it's called, but this is what rests up against the the little press here. Um, and then there's the receiver cup, and so it's the biggest size from the uh, kit that I rented from O'Reilly. It sits on here like that, so now you've got it set up like this. Um, and then this is where the brace, the bracket is for the bushing. And so the bushing is in, is in here like this. And then uh, this is the magical part. I have uh, 
32 millimeter, I believe. It's either 30 or 32 millimeter socket that I use for getting uh, oil filter housings off of the cobalt. And that, uh, this end of it sticks into the press right here. And then uh, I used the, obviously use the press to push on the, uh, this side of the bushing. So the part, the, the side of the bushing that's close to the tire um, has to come out towards the center. So you, you got this big flange on this side that's uh, not gonna let you go the other direction. But you heard um, it, it had to go in quite a bit because I'm just pushing on the rubber, but it actually um, had enough force to pop the bushing loose. You heard it really loud. I was not ready for that type of uh, explosion right at my ear, but um, then it came loose and uh, it was easy after that, take it all apart. So um, that was the setup that I used. Uh, so looking at the bushing, honestly, it's in really good shape. Um, you know, this side's a little messed up because I pressed on it with that socket, but um, you know, it's really not in that bad of shape, but uh, I'm glad I'm getting this uh, done out of the way. Um, let's go put it all back together. Here's the bushing, fully installed, uh, pressed in. You can see it, uh, you know, it's got some angles to it, but uh, it's straight on in as far as the angles that are needed for the drive line. And uh, I used some grease uh, to help it slide in a little bit, but uh, fully seated with the ball joint press, and now we'll put the control arm on. I got this front bolt in, but uh, it did take me quite a while. I was kind of surprised. I guess maybe with four brand new front control arms, all with brand new bushings, everything's really tight, so that's good. But um, this, uh, the other side where the um, nut is, it was pretty far off. And so what I ended up having to do, and I wanted to show you so that maybe it'll help you. I've got three of these uh, ratchet straps. I only have these smaller ones, so probably, um, you know, if I had bigger ones, it would have been maybe easier, but I've got two of them hooked onto the tire side of the bracket. And so it's pulling not only back, but kind of um, back into the side. And then I've got one more strap going all the way around the bracket. And so it's pulling straight back. So it's tipping the, um, the axle towards the back, but then also rotating it um, from the passenger front towards the driver rear to try to get those holes aligned. Um, I had to put all of my strength into snugging up these straps to get it to line up, but it did line up and then it went straight through easy peasy. But um, it really surprised me on this last one, just how much of a struggle it was compared to the others. So just a heads up on that. Well, the front control arms are done. Uh, it took about five and a half hours per side, uh, different situations and snags on each side. On the passenger side, it was really that front bolt getting it out and then getting it back in again with the ratchet straps. And uh, I didn't show it on video. I actually snapped that bolt when I put it in. I don't know why the torque really wasn't that high. It must have been a bad bolt or something. Luckily, I had another one. Ratchet straps again, got it all set up, went a lot faster, having to do it a second time. But uh, it's all torqued down now, 55 foot-pounds on uh, both ends of those upper control arms. TDSR now has all brand new control arms, uh, three videos showing you that, the front uppers, the front lowers, and the rears. Check all those out if you haven't already. And if you want to see more content, of course, subscribe to the channel. Give a thumbs up if this video was helpful to you, and hit that notification bell if you're interested. Uh, if you want to help uh, supply TDSR with some more parts, because there are a lot more projects ahead, you can support the channel on buymeacoffee.com. There's a link in the video description. Otherwise, we'll see you when the next video rolls around. It'll be soon, because this Jeep has a lot of work left to do. So until then, have a good one.